Uh, through oral histories, we work with 11 different tribes in the, in the park. Something is definitely going on in the Grand Canyon that the powers that be don't want the people to be aware of. This is the alarm raised by guests on Joe Rogan's show, suggesting a deliberate cover-up attempt of shocking discoveries in the Grand Canyon. What has been discovered in this wild place, and why is there a mad rush to keep it out of the news? Stay with us as we bring you how they tried to shut down the Grand Canyon after a drone captured what no one was supposed to see. Lost Civilization in Grand Canyon was, wait, Egyptian? Yeah, the Smithsonian published mm. some stuff in 1909, oh, wow. I guess, that where all this came from. There was an article that got written, and I don't know how much of it they proved or pro was proven or was just newspaper. Whoa. It's like bait back in the day. Look at this. Even of, more amazing, the artifact didn't match up to anything on the known record, rather than appearing to be of Native American origin, as one might expect, the object had distinct Egyptian or Tibetan designs. Mm -hmm. Could there have been an entire civilization of Egyptians living here? Mm -hmm. If so, how did they get here? The Grand Canyon is one of the greatest marvels of the natural world, as few other places evoke more respect for nature. Sitting deep in the heart of Arizona, this massive natural feature, with its colorful landscape and distinct ecosystems, draws in millions of visitors every year. The deep gorge spans a huge 277 miles in length and is up to 18 miles wide in some places. In other places, it is up to a mile deep. Sunrises and sunsets are often taken for granted, but not in this corner of the world. Both times are magical, with the shadows and light creating a mesmerizing palette of red, orange, and purple hues. The Grand Canyon is cut through by the Colorado River whose water has carved and shaped the landscape for millions of years. Visitors to the canyon, certain to be left breathless by the vista, may also be enthralled by the treasure trove of historical and cultural information buried in this place. The magnificent site has a long history that stretches back thousands of years, evidence of which can be found in the petroglyphs, artifacts, and dwelling ruins found there. They tell the story of indigenous people who lived in harmony with their rugged environment and how it influenced their way of life, including their religious practices. The Grand Canyon is way older than you can imagine. The oldest rocks discovered at the base of the canyon, called the Vishnu Basement Rocks, came about more than 1.7 billion years ago, thanks to volcanic activities. In recognition of the uncommon beauty of the Grand Canyon, President Theodore Roosevelt fought hard to grant it a protected status. The president became an ardent admirer following a visit in 1903, extolling it as a site every American should see at least once in their lifetime. Roosevelt's support eventually led to the Grand Canyon being designated a federal game reserve three years after his visit. In 1919, the Grand Canyon was officially recognized as one of the first national parks in the U.S., the Grand Canyon, however, is steep in mystery, which has kept scholars, researchers, and enthusiasts busy as they try to uncover the truth. Perhaps the most intriguing and tantalizing is the claim that ancient Egyptian artifacts and a complete underground city are hidden away within the depths of the canyon. It all started in 1909. In the spring of that year, two explorers, G.E. Kincaid and S.A. Jordan, made a shocking discovery deep inside the Grand Canyon that seemed to belong to the realm of fantasy than reality. The singular discovery has set in motion a series of events and cover-ups that reverberate till today. Kincaid was a seasoned explorer, so he knew his onions. He grew up in the wilds of Idaho where he developed his passion for exploring the unknown. He would become a seasoned hunter, explorer, and archaeologist, all of which would take him to more untamed places. Kincaid explored the Wild West for more than three decades under the tutorship of Jordan, where he sought to surface the secrets buried deep within the earth. Needless to say, Jordan was bringing a wealth of archaeological experience to the expedition, and even more hunger to find what was hidden. What he reported to have found within the Grand Canyon would need a word more powerful than shocking to adequately describe it. Imagine stumbling upon a whole city under a canyon, and not just that. Imagine their bafflement as they found artifacts dating back to ancient Egypt there, too. Naturally, the questions were, who built this hidden city? How did it manage to remain hidden for so long, forgotten by time? And how did artifacts from faraway Egypt end up in this location? 
According to those explorers, they found the entrance to the secret city above the Colorado River. It took a very challenging climb to even get to the entrance. Some other explorers would have given up, but not this pair. Even gazing at the entranceway, this enterprising pair knew their perseverance was going to be amply rewarded. The entrance bore the marks of painstaking craftsmanship that they found could have existed so long ago. Beyond the entrance was a network of passages that stretched as far as their eyes could see, which was not very far due to the foreboding darkness that confronted them. Venturing deeper into this dark place underneath the earth, the passages narrowed and the air got ominously colder. However, they would lead Kincaid and Jordan to secret rooms overflowing with artifacts that the historians of North America could not even understand. They found, lying about, covered with millennia worth of dust, tools, and weapons that bore evidence of being meticulously crafted. They tripped on other copper implements that proved the people who left them behind had access to sophisticated technology, way more sophisticated than one would imagine the people were capable of. However, Kincaid and Jordan were in for even more shock. They were astounded to find giant mummies there, over 1,600 meters underground. As they reported later, this was totally unexpected. The sizes of these mummies were amazing. Kincaid described them as colossus. He estimated they must have stood at over eight feet tall. The mummies were preserved in the underground chambers whose level of dryness astounded Kincaid. They were clothed with dark linen garments sparkling with precious metal dust. Exploring the city further revealed the builder's engineering prowess. Kincaid and his companion marveled at the level of precision achieved by the builders as they carved rooms and halls into the rock. They also find murals decorating the walls. These art pieces depicted scenes of everyday life in ancient times, including their religious ceremonies. Another surprise was the complexity of the city's layout. Kincaid and Jordan found grand plazas and waterways that were still in good condition, bringing water from unknown springs into the city. The biggest link to ancient Egypt was the series of hieroglyphs covering the walls and other artifacts throughout the underground city. The symbols that tripped many scholars bore an undeniable resemblance to ancient Egypt, suggesting that somehow, in a global cultural exchange that predated anything known to modern-day scholars and researchers, the influence of Egypt or Tibet had spread to the Grand Canyon. It was immediately clear that the artifacts found by Kincaid and Jordan bore no similarity or resemblance to the cultures of the Native American tribes associated with the region. The pottery and sculptures showed totally unfamiliar animals and gods. In addition to these were other foreign-looking objects made of gold or silver, alongside crystal orbs that seemed to have bright lights coming from within them. Kincaid and Jordan's expedition would become news, with details of their intriguing find capturing the public's imagination. The tantalizing thought of an ancient city buried deep under the Grand Canyon was just too juicy to be resisted sparking a frenzy of speculations that in some cases exaggerated. However, Kincaid and Jordan arranged for the artifacts and mummies to be carefully documented and transported back to the Smithsonian Institute. If the discovery of mummies and a forgotten underground city was shocking, the events that followed were way more shocking. Following the publication of an article detailing this expedition was a vicious attempt to hide everything. It was as if there was a concerted effort to erase every evidence of Kincaid and Jordan's work. Smithsonian's vehement denial of the existence of Kincaid's expedition has never sat well with many observers, and this only adds more intrigue to an already fascinating story. Adding to the skepticism about the Smithsonian's claim is the conspicuous absence of record, documentation, or even a humble paper trail. The absence is too clean to not have been orchestrated, in fact, the denial of Kincaid's work has had the opposite effect of whatever the Smithsonian had hoped for. Instead of moving on, investigators have dug in, ensuring that the story has not died out. Now, why would an esteemed institution like the Smithsonian try to bury a story like this? It turns out one doesn't have to look far to see reasons for this type of reaction. Some investigators have claimed that the Smithsonian is highly invested in protecting historical narratives. Acknowledging Kincaid's finding risks rewriting history and upending long-held beliefs about pre-Columbian civilizations in North America. 
if the Smithsonian were to admit to this discovery, the credibility of a lot of academic and historical institutions would be called into question. It would require an assessment of established archaeological methodologies and historical narratives that have been passed down through generations. In addition, this alleged attempt at secrecy could have been done as a misguided favor to the Native American tribes. It could have been an effort to preserve their cultural heritage. As mentioned earlier, the Grand Canyon has deep spiritual and cultural significance to the Native American people, with the sacred site holding a lot of their undiscovered secrets. Would acknowledging Kincaid's findings trigger looting, vandalism, and exploitation of these sacred sites? Would invaluable cultural artifacts be lost if it is made public that there are treasures under the Grand Canyon? There is, however, another angle to the Smithsonian's denial. Some thinkers have linked this to geopolitical and societal interests. In modern times, knowledge has proven to be power many times. Putting it out there that treasures from faraway Egypt lay under the Grand Canyon can have far-reaching consequences, including challenges to the sovereignty and historical claims of nations. Could it have invoked nationalistic sentiments between nations? Could it have given rise to land and heritage disputes? This does not seem unlikely when one considers the special status of the Grand Canyon. This angle is not unheard of. Some African countries are agitating for the return of artifacts and pieces seized by their former colonial masters and displayed in museums. Some repatriations have already taken place. Hiding the truth could have helped to preserve the peace, nip potential conflicts in the bud, and preserve the status quo. It must also be acknowledged that the Smithsonian was caught in a bad position here, in the intersection of academia, government institutions, and the truth-seeking public. The institution has to walk the fine line between being the guardian of knowledge and engendering public trust. After the initial denial, the Smithsonian would be opening itself to scrutiny and criticism by later admitting to the fact. Doing so threatens to erode public trust not only in itself but in science and scientific institutions at large. The only viable option seems to be to double down on the denial. Meanwhile, this was not the first or last time the Smithsonian has been accused of hoarding knowledge. Take, for example, this theory that the Smithsonian has tried to suppress evidence that there was contact between the so-called old and new worlds before the Columbian era. Some scholars argue that artifacts exist that prove that early European settlers or other seafarers from other parts of the world landed in the Americas long before Christopher Columbus learned to captain a ship. However, it is alleged that the Smithsonian is sitting on top of this evidence and won't let it see the light of the day. Again, the motive here is to perpetuate the historical narrative that Columbus has discovered the New World. To support this theory, the supporters point out that the Smithsonian has not been able to absolutely suppress the evidence, as there have been chance findings of artifacts like Roman coins, Viking-inspired objects, etc. in North America. All of these predated the arrival of Columbus on the shores of North America. There are also allegations that the Smithsonian is hiding evidence of other advanced civilizations from ancient times. It is claimed that the institution has destroyed artifacts demonstrating that some of these ancient people possessed technologies far more advanced than mainstream archaeology is willing to give them credit for. One popular example is the Antikythera mechanism, which clearly would not fit into the technological timeline of humanity supported by the academia. The Smithsonian might also find it difficult to beat the allegations that it had been involved in hiding the evidence of alien life and technologies. Some researchers maintain that the Institute has in its custody spacecraft parts, biological remains whose origins are terrestrial and other materials, but is keeping them away from the public as its scientists study them. This theory implies that the Smithsonian is part of a larger effort by the government to keep humanity ignorant about UFOs and alien encounters. Despite the alleged cover-ups, is it possible to get to the truth of what actually lies buried under the Grand Canyon? Between 1909 and the present, technology has grown in leaps and bounds, opening up many possibilities when it comes to exploration. However, what does the framework for exploring such heritage landscapes look like today? 
Exploring the amazing Grand Canyon is tightly controlled by the government with the aim of preserving the natural beauty of the region. Another objective is preserving the archaeological integrity of the site. The National Park Service is the governing entity, and it has marked many areas as no-go areas to the general public. These out-of-bounds zones cover areas recognized as sacred to Native Americans, zones with sensitive ecological habitats, and areas that are geologically fragile. The overall objective is to limit human impact on the Grand Canyon and ensure the jewel of the wild is available for future generations to enjoy. Any researcher or adventurer who needs to access these areas must apply through a long application process and be able to convince the authorities that their activities would align with conservation goals. While this can be a hurdle to scientific exploration of the Grand Canyon, modern technologies can help to bypass this impediment. One of the hottest tools is satellite imagery. This technology can scan huge areas from high up in space, providing a bird's eye view. Scientists can get mapping data and geological surveys that can reveal previously unknown features. Thanks to the prevalence of high-resolution images, scientists studying the Grand Canyon can pick up changes in terrain and vegetation patterns. They can also spot potential archaeological sites that would be difficult to locate on the ground due to the restrictions. Other technologies that can prove crucial in exploring the Grand Canyon include ground-penetrating radar and LIDAR. These non-invasive methods allow scientists to look beneath the surface without actually disturbing it. They can help to discover anomalies in the soil and vegetation that could be evidence that archaeological sites, ancient riverbeds, or other fascinating geological formations are nearby. Would there ever be another expedition like Kincaid's in the Grand Canyon? One thing that is sure is there is no lack of passionate independent researchers who would jump at the opportunity to continue the work started by Kincaid and Jordan. Meanwhile, there have been tales of visitors to the Grand Canyon returning items they took. This is no matter of a change of heart and embracing environmental conservation, though. These individuals believed the items they carted away were cursed. Park rangers have detailed how they regularly receive letters and returned items from visitors who insist they have experienced a string of bad luck or ill health that could be traced to the items they pilfered during their visit. One of the most well-known cases was a visitor who returned home with a piece of rock. They reported that they immediately started facing a series of misfortunes, starting from health problems and personal setbacks. The visitor sent an accompanying letter stating their belief that the source of their travails was the rock. They hoped returning the rock would restore balance to their life. They also begged for forgiveness from the canyon. Another case involved a hiker who made off with a pocket full of sand taken from a riverbed. They soon reported experiencing accidents defying explanations. This was apart from sudden unexpected financial troubles. This hiker followed the same process of returning the sand to the Grand Canyon in the expectation that their life would return to normal. Another family experienced their own ill luck when their children collected some colorful stones during their vacation in the Grand Canyon. These were to serve as mementos, but the story soon turned awry, with a series of unfortunate events overtaking them. After concluding the stones in their possession were cursed, the family sent them back to where they belonged through the mail with an accompanying letter of apology. Other objects that some visitors could not resist hauling away, but which they later regretted included twigs, leaves, and pine cones. But something common to all these people was a tale of trailing misfortunes. Due to this phenomenon, the authorities of the Grand Canyon have urged visitors to show their respect for natural and cultural resources by leaving the park the way they found it. Another theory that has survived and flourished is that there is a resident god in a secluded part of the Grand Canyon. The god is known as a Kachina and is regarded as the guardian of the earth who possesses a deep connection to the land and its people. This god is known by the Hopi people whose ancestral land falls in some parts of the park. Meanwhile, this Kachina is not known to always behave godlike. It supposedly gets a kick out of tormenting visitors who came too close for comfort in his private domain. People claim this Hopi god can muster up storms, control the wind, 
and even make the ground rumble. There are people who claim to have survived an encounter with this vindictive god. They reported feeling an overwhelming sense of awe and fear while in its presence. This god is not even the only malevolent, non-human entity inhabiting the Grand Canyon. There have been reports of creatures known by the indigenous people as Powakus. Powakus are said to take delight in pranking visitors or sometimes making them unsettled. Some travelers have reported hearing strange noises in the dead of the night, sighting vague figures in the moonlight and feeling of chill descending on the environment suddenly. All of these have been blamed on the Powakus of the Grand Canyon. One of the spots notorious for these extraordinary activities is the Sipapu. Many Native American tribes believe the spot hosts the gateway to the afterlife. As a result of the unique characteristics of this place, the natives believe that a lot of crossing from the spirit world into the physical world takes place here. Closely related to this is another discovery that was made using Google Earth. The internet went into a frenzy when a strange formation resembling a doorway was spotted in the Grand Canyon. This fascinating feature is located some 250 miles from Las Vegas, and many attempts to explain it have come up. There have been claims that this doorway is evidence that we have been visited by aliens. The idea is that the structure looks more sophisticated than to have come into existence by chance. According to the supporters of this theory, the doorway is a relic of the time when beings from outside our world freely visited the planet and caused so many changes to our home. This strange doorway has also been linked to the ancient Egyptians and their pyramids. The claim is that the doorway could have been built by the same set of engineers that constructed the huge pyramids, providing yet another ancient link between the Egypt of millenniums ago and the Grand Canyon. This is due to the almost scary resemblance or building style this baffling door shares with the more famous ancient monuments from North Africa. The exact reason for the existence of such a doorway in such an out-of-the-way place is the basis of an ongoing debate. Proposed ideas include the door being an entrance to hidden chambers, storing huge amounts of treasures, but in other dimensions. Others have even theorized that it is a one-way door that allows entrance and not entry into the planet, still suggesting the involvement of extraterrestrials. However, critics ask why aliens have not made more appearances and initiated more contact with humanity if this door really leads to the other world. But supporters have proposed that the lack of continuous presence could be due to aliens struggling with their own crises, such as sourcing for energy or overpopulation. Being preoccupied in this way could leave them with hardly any time for exploring the cosmos, despite having the capacity for interstellar trips. Others claimed aliens could have found us less exciting as a race, meaning we have a low appeal as a destination and the aliens are deliberately avoiding us to pursue more lucrative missions. Perhaps they have discovered our technologies to be way behind their own and see no personal gain in collaborating with us. By far less otherworldly but still intriguing are the claims of spotting the elusive Bigfoot in the Grand Canyon. Some visitors to the amazing geological feature have reported coming in contact with the humanoid hiding out in the dense forests and remote areas. This type of encounter actually dates back to 1903, when a creature with long white hair and an unkempt beard was reportedly spotted. It wore no clothes and had frighteningly long fingers that resembled talons. After repeated sightings, this creature was given its own name, the Mogollon Monster based on the place it was seen in the Mogollon Rim in the Colorado Plateau. Other reports have pieced together what the creature looks like physically. There have been reports of finding 22-inch footprints and hearing a whistling sound. Others said the Mogollon monster has a very repugnant odor reminding one of dead fish or skunk. People who have come in contact with this creature warn that it could become violent and territorial. They have witnessed it decapitating a deer and other wildlife before eating them, it would be no surprise for an elusive creature to inhabit the Grand Canyon environments as they offer ideal hiding places. In addition to this, the creature would have access to plenty of food as an omnivore. It would also be in an environment that is hard to reach by inquisitive humans.